vote, madame, in the interest of your penultimate eldest Elizabeth, that I may solicit a private audience in the course of this moment. What? Oh, 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 a private audience. Uh, yes, um, Mr. Collins, I'm sure Lizzie will be very happy. Uh, I'm sure she can have no objection. Ginny, Mary, I want you upstairs. Dear madam, do not go. Not go? <laughs> uh, Mr. Collins must excuse me, but there is nothing that you can say to me that anybody need not hear. I am going away myself. Not then, Lizzie. <laughs> I'm sorry, you stay where you are. Lizzie, I desire you to stay at Mr. Collins. Stay. <laughs> Your modesty adds only to your other perfections. My intentions have been too marked to be mistaken. Let me enumerate my reasons for marrying. First, I would like to set an example of marriage in my parish. Of course. Secondly, it greatly adds to a man's well-being. And thirdly, by the recommendation and consideration of Lady Catherine de Burke herself, let her play an active, sort of useful role, and make a small income go a long way, for very words. Fourthly, as I am in to inherit your father's estate once he is gone, I feel obligated to choose one of his daughters, so the loss may be as least painful as possible. There is nothing left for me to say but to assure you, in the most animated language, the violence of my affection. <laughs> I'm well aware of your father's financial situation, and I promise you that no words of reproach shall ever pass my lips when we are married. No. <laughs> no. Mr. Collins, I am very sensible of the honor of your proposals, but it is impossible for me to do otherwise than decline. It is very common for a young lady to first reject the man she truthfully means to accept. <laughs> Mr. Collins. I am not one of those young ladies. You cannot make me happy. And I am certain that I am the last woman in the world who can make you happy. Or, or your friend Lady Catherine to know me. She would find me in every respect ill-qualified. This matter may be considered therefore as finally so. But all points of financial stability point to it. It is the practice of all elegant females. Mr. Collins. I am not an elegant female intending to plague you. I am a rational creature speaking the truth from her heart. I will not have you. Can I speak plainer? You are uniformly charming. <laughs> Dear Mr. Collins, allow me to be the first to congratulate you. She has begun lightly with a refusal. A refusal. <laughs> Mrs. Kennedy, you are watching me. She's a headstrong, foolish girl, and she does not know her own interest. Headstrong. But I will make her know it. Headstrong, foolish. Dear me, do not press her hand into this marriage. She would not offer much to my felicity. Mr. Bennett, you must come and name Lizzie. Marry Mr. Collins, for she she will not have him. Gray, excuse me. I have not the pleasure of understanding you. He is saying he will not have Lizzie. Lizzie! <laughs> what am I to do on such an occasion? Insist upon her marrying Mr. Collins. Come here, child. <laughs> True that Mr. Collins has made you an offer of marriage. It is. Of which you have refused? I have, sir. Well, an unhappy alternative is before you. Your mother will never see you again if you do not marry Mr. Collins. I'll never see you again if you do. <laughs> I tell you what, Lizzie. You go on in this way, and I'm sure you will never get a husband at all. And I'm sure I do not know who is to maintain you when your father is dead. <laughs> Mr. Collins! Gray, excuse me, but I wish to withdraw my pretensions of your daughter's favor. I hereby leave an apology, but resignation is never so perfect. I'm sorry. Miss Lizzie? I will simply say that I will never speak to you again, and you will find me as good as my word. I take no pleasure in speaking to undutiful children. <laughs> the discussion of Mr. Collins' offer was nearly at an end, but rather than any camp in his disarray, he made it known that he was always to have left on Saturday, and until Saturday he meant to stay.
attentions paid to Lizzie were now transferred to Charlotte Lucas, who's visiting, and whose civility in listening to him was a seasonable relief to us all. Mr. Bingley comes back no more this winter. But it's only evident that Mrs. Bingley does not mean he should. I will read you the passage which particularly hurts me. I will have no reserves from you. Miss Darcy is impatient to see his younger sister, and to confess the truth, we are scarcely less eager to meet her again. Georgiana has no equal for beauty, elegance, and accomplishments, and we dare entertain the hope of her being hereafter our sister. Foolishness! She is a child. Is it not clear enough? Does it not expressly declare that Miss Bingley neither wishes nor expects me to be her sister, and that she is perfectly convinced of her brother's indifference to me? Can there be any other opinion on the subject? Yes, there can. Her mind is completely different. Will you hear it? Most willingly. Miss Bingley sees that her brother is in love with me, and wants him to marry Georgiana Darcy. Now, Mr. Bingley's further regard is thus imputed by his friend Mr. Darcy. Interference. He watched you most narrowly as he danced. You must not criticize, Lizzie. Perhaps I have imagined the whole thing. Women always fancy admiration means more than it does. And men take care that it should. His sister has influence over him in conjunction with his friends. Surely she only wishes his happiness. Oh, she may wish a great many things besides his happiness, such as an increase in wealth, consequence, and good connections. No, Lizzie. I think no ill of him or his sister. Let, this, let us take it in the best light, in the light in which it may be understood. See, at least I have the, the comfort of knowing that it has been no more than an error of fancy on my side, and it has injured no one else but myself. Really, you are too good. You wish to think all the world respectable. The more I see in the world, the more I am dissatisfied with it. And every day confirms my belief of the inconsistency of all human care. You must not hinder your happiness on my behalf. So your sister is cross in love, I find. I congratulate her. Next to being married, a woman likes to be a little cross in love every now and then. But you would hardly bear to be long outdone by Jane. Here are enough officers at Meryton to disappoint all the young ladies in the country. Let Wickham be your man. He is a pleasant fellow and would jilt you creditably. <laughs> I thank you, sir, but a less agreeable man would satisfy me. We must not all expect Jane's good fortune. Mm -hmm. 